needs for free when you get TV, internet, and phone. Ask for Trio from Rev. Coming up tonight on our news. A family was found unresponsive in this Nassau village home after neighbors pried their way into the home. Detailed straight ahead on our news. A double shooting leaves one man dead and lands a juvenile in hospital. Details on that story coming up. Democratic National Alliance leader Branville McCartney explains how a coalition between his party and the free national movement would work. One MP says he's offended by members of the Vote No campaign. That and more tonight on our news. Welcome to our news. I'm Christina McNeil. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, a couple and their infant granddaughter were found unresponsive in their Nassau Village home early this morning after neighbors knocked on their door and got no response. Police suspect the deaths of the adults may have been caused by toxic fumes from a generator that was connected to their house. Police confirmed that the couple succumbed to their injuries while their infant granddaughter is listed in critical condition. Simone Davis has more in this report. Ministry of Tourism employee Princess Sims, her husband Brady Sims, and their infant granddaughter were found unresponsive in this house in Nassau Village shortly after 8 o'clock this morning. Police say neighbors knocked on the front door and began to worry after getting no response. That's when neighbors reportedly tried to force their way into the home and call the police for help. Assistant Commissioner of Police Stephen Dean gave these details on the scene. What we can tell you is very preliminary information. We can tell you that shortly after 8 a.m. this morning, that police received information of two, an adult male, an adult female, along with an uh, infant child. The couple was babysitting their granddaughter because their daughter had to work a late shift. Dean said despite efforts to revive the victims, Sims and her husband were rushed to the hospital where they died. The infant is now in critical condition. Police say although the investigation is still in the preliminary stages, they do believe that the cause of this tragedy could be linked to a generator that was left running overnight. Dean suggested it may be possible that the family inhaled a serious amount of dangerous chemicals, namely carbon monoxide, from their generator. We believe that a generator might have been attached to the house and that it might have been attributed to what it might have happened. But they'll be in the preliminary stages of our investigation. Once we be able to get some further information, we'll be able to reveal that information out. But we want to still use this opportunity for persons who might have apparatus, make sure get professionals to connect instruments to your house, make sure they're in secure locations and um, try to keep them away from your homes. Our news understands that the family's power supply was disconnected yesterday due to non-payment, hence the use of a generator. They had a, some technical, technical issues, so there was no electricity at the time. Bahamas Power and Light Company issued a statement today advising residents with generators to ensure that they are being used properly in the absence of supply by BPL. Dean said the incident hit close to home for the Royal Bahamas Police Force because Brady Sims was a police reserve and the couple's son is currently serving on the police force. It's really a sorrowful time for us in the Royal Bahamas Police Force and the country and particularly just the residents of Nassau, but as you can see by the expressions on their face, um, what they're going through. So this is a hard moment because one of their sons is a police officer attached to the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Princess Sims worked as a receptionist in the Ministry of Tourism for more than 20 years. Director General Joy Gibralou said employees were so distraught after learning of her death that they had to be sent home at 1 p.m. She described Sims as loving, extremely friendly, and full of life. Gibralou said Sims also loved her husband. Princess was larger than life the most well-dressed, always beautifully and immaculately turned out. In fact, she set a standard for everyone to follow. So while we can talk about her physical outward appearance, what needs to be mentioned is her generosity. She was generous in spirit. And many of us have remarked on the fact that she would say to you, I like you. And if you were blessed to be liked by princess, you would just embrace she gave and I mean, there was no end. Reporting for our news, I'm Simone Davis. 
Thanks, Simone. Well, an overnight shooting left one man dead and a juvenile nursing wounds after police say they were gunned down while standing outside a home through burial ground corner. Jasmine Brown has the details in this report. Investigators here at the Central Detective Unit say they are looking for two gunmen who opened fire on the victims last night. According to head of the Central Detective Unit Chief Superintendent Paul Rowe, the shooting took place shortly after 10 p.m. Our preliminary information is that these individuals were standing in a yard here at a uh, barrel ground corner when persons uh, approached them. We believe two males armed with firearms, discharged shots, uh, hitting these individuals. Uh, fatally injuring one. Roll explains what happened once police arrived at the scene. Where they encountered a male suffering from gunshot injuries to the body. A second male, believed to be a, a juvenile, was also shot in the ordeal. Roll says the adult male was pronounced dead on the scene while the teen was transported to hospital, where he is currently listed in stable condition. Family members have identified the man killed during last night's shooting incident as Devano da Costa. Da Costa is the 46th person to be murdered in the Bahamas so far this year. Meantime, police are seeking the public's help in locating those responsible. We appeal to persons in this community here in Barrow Ground Corner who would have any information with this latest homicide to reach out to to us and help us to solve this this uh, murder here in this uh, quiet community here of Barrow Ground Corner. Anyone with information is asked to contact police at 911-919 or Crime Stoppers at 328 TIPS. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. In other news, Democratic National Alliance leader Branville McCartney today shed light on how a potential coalition between his party and the free national movement would work, while hitting back at those who called McCartney a wannabe politician. Dana Smith reports. Branding the Labor and National Insurance Minister Slick Shane, McCartney said Gibson is clearly afraid of what an opposition coalition would mean for the PLP. And as for Gibson's criticisms that he's just a wannabe politician, McCartney said at least he's not a politician who's been plagued by scandal in the past. I don't want to be the kind of politician that we have today. So in that regard, he must be right. I don't want to be a kind of politician who had to resign over scandalous information that came to light to the public back in 2007 uh, regarding Anna Nicole Smith. Gibson yesterday shot down suggestions that a DNA FNM coalition would topple the PLP. He dubbed McCartney a non-factor and said anything McCartney has to say is a waste of time. Well, McCartney said he found Gibson's comments amusing and disappointing, and it's clear Gibson was only speaking out of fear. Shane Gibson commented because of fear. He knows as a fact, he knows as a fact, that if the opposition forces get together, the PLP, the finish. McCartney has said a coalition between the FNM and the DNA would be the PLP's worst nightmare. He said today the idea is still up in the air, but explained how the coalition could work. The idea would be, I would assume, we don't run against each other in particular seats. Um, and we support each other in the seats that the respective parties are running in. You support each other. The base that the DNA would have in a seat that the FNM is running in, or if it's another party we're dealing with, uh, we support that person. And we support them. If they're having a rally, we come out and support them. If we take our people that we have, we have people in every constituency. We take our people, put behind them, and, and vice versa. Opposition leader Dr. Hubert Menes said yesterday he is open to discussing the possibility, but advised McCartney to tone down his arrogant attitude. McCartney suggests that today he's willing to bury the hatchet, explaining his critiques of the FNM have never been personal. I don't take offense to what Dr. Menes said of me. I've explained, I, I don't take offense at all. I mean, 
Not at all. Um, um, I took offense, of, not offense, but I found it amusing and a bit disappointing what Slick Shane had to say. I can tell you that. But what Dr. Meadows said, no, man. I mean, I've been called worse things than that. Yeah, it's not offensive to me. And I, I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. Reporting for Our News, I'm Dana Smith. Thanks, Dana. Well, Fox Hill Member of Parliament Fred Mitchell says with more women than men registered to vote in the June 7th referendum, he hopes women will not be fooled by a group of men telling them to vote no. Georgie O'Bain reports. Fox Hill MP Fred Mitchell says he was born a man, so the upcoming gender equality vote is not for him, but he hopes women will not be fooled. Mitchell said a yes vote on June 7th will only give men and women the same rights, and all of the conversation aimed to cloud that is simply foolishness. I know that I was born male, <laughs> born, still male, in 1953. And in 1973, the Constitution gave me certain rights simply because I was born male. And I'm saying that women should have those rights too. Mitchell said he is offended that a group comprised of only men would encourage a no vote. I am deeply offended, deeply offended, and I told the ladies this on Monday night, by a campaign that's being run by all men trying to stop women for getting, for, to, to get equality in our country in law. All men, not one woman standing with them saying, we want equality for women. They're saying, no, we don't. Deputy Prime Minister Philip Davis says he continues to see things that are simply unfair due to the wording of the Constitution. And if women of the Bahamas don't see a problem with it, then there is simply nothing that he can do but vote yes to all four bills. Why should you go to work in a government department, do the same thing as a man will do, and get less pay? And you can't do anything about that. And I'm voting yes to all four. I'm voting yes to all four, and I'm voting for my, my children. I have a daughter, a single daughter who's living in, working in the United States as a medical doctor. She's engaged, likely to get married, and I would want my grandchildren, if I want them to come and live and grow up with me, to be able to do that. Right, without me worrying whether they are behemoths or not, because they are behemoths, because they are my seed. The gender equality vote is set for June 7th. Reporting for Our News, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Thanks, Giorgio. After the break, a Fox Hill resident now has a new place to call home. And a little later, a surprise visit makes an impact at a Grand Bahama High School. Fathers having a bit of breakfast with their sons here at Stephen Dillard Primary. That story straight ahead. Our News has that and more on the other side of this break.